Last year, a woman named Carol Denise Richardson was released from federal prison after President Obama granted her clemency. She'd been serving a life sentence for possessing and intending to distribute 50 or more grams of cocaine, on top of having an already lengthy sentence, lengthy criminal record. But she hadn't done anything specifically violent, so theoretically, we should have been able to release her early and see good results, at least according to advocates of criminal leniency. But unfortunately, nothing good has come from this, this decision. Now, less than a year later, Carol Richardson is going back to prison. As part of her release, she was put on a 10-year probation, which meant she had to check in regularly with her probation officers. But she didn't. She didn't tell them she'd left her job. She didn't tell them she'd moved. She didn't even tell them she'd been arrested. Now, her latest offense, I should say, falls somewhere short of heinous. She was arrested in Pasadena, Texas, for stealing $60 worth of laundry detergent so she could buy drugs. From everything I've read in the news, it seems clear that Carol Richardson is not a serious, violent menace to society. But it's also clear that she was not prepared to re-enter society. She still hadn't kicked her drug habit. She still couldn't keep and hold a steady job. She still couldn't meet the most basic requirements of citizenship and basic adulthood. But the real question is, why would she be ready? Why wouldn't we expect that of her? She never went through the rehab that could have given her a second chance at life. Instead, we just threw her in the deep end and watched her sink. And that's why I think this story is worth mentioning, because I believe it should give pause to every advocate of criminal leniency. They like to argue that taking people out of prison both heals communities and saves money. But who was better off once Carol Richardson was released? Not her community. She committed a crime within months. Not the taxpayers. They're still paying for prison costs. And here's the thing. Neither She's back in prison yet again. But sometimes the consequences are worse than this sad story. They're horrifying. Last year, a man named Wendell Callahan brutally killed his ex-girlfriend and her two young daughters. A frantic 911 call from the scene said the two girls' throats had been slit. These murders were an atrocity, and they were completely avoidable. Wendell Callahan walked out of federal prison in August 2014 after his sentence had been reduced in accordance with revisions to the sentencing guidelines made by the Sentencing Commission. Callahan's original sentence should have kept him in jail until 2018. If he had been in jail instead of on the streets, a young family would be alive today. What the Richardson case on one hand and the Callahan case on the other hand shows is two things. First, if we're going to reform the criminal justice system, we shouldn't focus on merely reducing sentences. That doesn't do all that much to help our society. Instead, we should focus on rehabilitating people while they're in prison, whatever the length of their sentence. They need serious help. They can never hope to redeem themselves and, once they're out of jail, stay out for good. And we should give them that help. Not only because it's good for them, though it is, but because it's good for us as a society. This is why I support real reform that will make our prisons safer for inmates and correction officers alike and take real steps to help inmates leave their lives of crime behind once and for all. The second lesson is this. We need to know far more than we do about how many people we release early from prison, prison go back to a life of crime. What types of crime? How many murders? How many robberies? How many drug arrests? Those numbers can be small or they can be large, but we need to know them to understand the full scope of our problem. And having that information will help the President decide each case as he considers when and how to use his pardon power. But today, the federal government doesn't even compile these data. That is why I, along with Senators Hatch, Sessions, and Purdue, introduced a bill last year to require that the government collect and report 
on these numbers. Unfortunately, the bill did not pass into law. So I want to announce today that I intend to reintroduce the bill with a renewed sense of urgency. This is just one story, after all. We don't know how many people granted clemency are returning to crime. But that's all the more reason to start collecting more data. We need to thoroughly evaluate cold, hard evidence before we make any sweeping changes to our criminal laws. Carol Richardson's story should warn us the perils of letting ideology get the better of common sense. We owe it to our neighbors to keep their families safe, and we owe it to Carol, the Carol Richardsons of the world to give them a real and honest chance at life once they complete their sentence. Mr. President, yield the floor.